Lua Minquin, who was close to death, only wanted to shrink into the shell of Enranju and spend his life peacefully. Unfortunately, the sky did not meet people's wishes. Some people simply couldn't see her purity and dragged her into the turbulent world. Keywords of the novel Enranju no pop-ups, Enranju txt complete collection download, Enranju latest chapter reading. Chapter 1 Memories like dreams You are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 1 Memories like dreams Dark clouds cover the sky, lightning flashes and thunder roars. Bean-sized raindrops fell from the sky and quickly formed silver lines. The whole world is enveloped in a silver rain curtain, and the day feels like night. After the thunderous roar, another bolt of lightning tore open the dark clouds that covered the sky and sun. With that flickering light, one can see a person lying in the puddle by the river. The dress was covered in mud, and the hair was messy and fluffy. A small ball huddled there, letting the rain wash it away. That helpless look looks very pitiful. Pushy, pushy. The sound of footsteps on a rainy day was particularly clear. The person lying on the ground opened a small gap in their eyes and weakly closed them. Even if it's dead, can't there be a whole body? Who would rush on this ghostly day except for those hungry beasts? Let's die first and then be eaten. This way, you won't feel any pain. Thinking of this, her heart was filled with desolation. She has nothing left to cling to in this world. Nevertheless, a teardrop still slipped down from the corner of the eye, a silver light flashed in the sky, and a face with exquisite makeup and elegant temperament suddenly appeared in front of the girl. Her face was as heavy as water, and her cold eyes were filled with disgust. In a calm voice, there were no ups and downs. I have only seen in my life that a girl's family can be so shameless. All right, don't stick there, or you'll dirty my eyes. Go away. A sharp roar enveloped in the roaring thunder. The girl's momentary confusion is truly illusory. She looked up in confusion, her lips wriggling as if trying to explain something. But another roar rang in my ear. Even when mixed with the sound of rain, it can still be distinguished as a man's voice. A shameful thing, let's see if I don't kill you today. The girl felt a daze in front of her, and her whole body flew out, hitting the stone table heavily before landing on the ground. Ah! I can't say if this call is painful or if my heart is filled with unwillingness. Ha! Huh. Luo Mingchuan sat up with a stirring spirit. The middle coat on his body had already been soaked with sweat. She gasped heavily and looked out the window through her messy hair. The undulating mountains are lush and lush. That towering appearance makes people inexplicably feel at ease. In Luo Mingchuan's eyes, clarity gradually returned. These past events seem to have passed for a long time, but they also seem to have happened yesterday. She let out a soft sigh. Originally, not deliberately thinking does not mean that one has forgotten. Between the two highest peaks in Suzhou Prefecture, there is a bustling valley. This is currently the best place to go. Anranju. The buildings here are very interesting, with small courtyards hanging on the cliffs on both sides like tofu blocks. Seemingly independent small courtyards, but they can also be reorganized by government agencies to merge several courtyards together. The guests who come here are not only curious about such buildings, but also amazed by the fragrance here. No matter how picky you are, you will always find a fragrance that satisfies you here. No matter whether you are male or female, regardless of your age, after taking the fragrant bath here, you will always praise it endlessly. Of course, the night market here is also another eye-dot-catching highlight. At the beginning of the night market, Rows of lanterns were lit up on the street, and street vendors were also busy. The crowd is moving and bustling, like a street market falling into the mortal world, very lively. Today's Enranju is particularly busy. The richest man in Suzhou, Mr. Yuan, celebrated his 60th birthday today and booked a venue here. Because we greeted in advance, it didn't make anyone feel flustered. In order to demonstrate his benevolence, 
old master Yuan did not clear the entire night market. He only said that he could draw a large enough place for him to entertain guests. Aunt Tian, how are you preparing here? After packing himself up, Luo Mingchuan arrived at the scene. Tian Guanchir is the general manager of Enranju and one of the most trusted people in Luomingquan. Tian Guanchir was staring at them hanging lanterns when he saw Luo Mingchuan. He was clearly stunned for a moment and said, Miss, are you taking leave? Only a few confidants around him know that Luo Mingchuan is the owner of Anran residence. Externally, she is just a distant relative of Tian Guanchir. Because of some skills, I was assigned to patrol in a patrol team and usually patrol with everyone. Of course, there is no one who dares to make things difficult for her, even though she is a big backer in the field of management. Ming Chuan smiled and blinked his eyes, it's so lively today, following the patrol team, how boring. Tian Guanchir's mind is clear. Today, there are many people and things to attend to, and many things need to be closely monitored. If the girl leaves the patrol team, there will be more things she can do. I couldn't help but joke and say, how could Steward Wong agree? The steward of the patrol team is the most rigid and difficult to talk about. It's really surprising that he agreed to Ming Chuan's leave despite being so busy today. Luo Ming Chuan pursed his lips and smiled, with Aunt Tian's face, how could she not agree? Tian Guanchir smiled and shook his head. I don't have that much face. Although Wang Guanchir was a bit rigid, he wasn't foolish. She should have guessed some of the girl's identity to some extent. Tian Guanchir saw Luo Mingchuan looking at the stage in front of him and whispered, Mr. Yuan has invited the girls from the Red Clothes Workshop to come and dance to cheer us up. Moreover, the girl in red came over personally. Miss, do you want to go over and say hello? Luo Mingchuan smiled and shook his head. I'm not in a hurry about this. I'll just take a look around. Upon hearing what Luo Mingchuan said, Tian Guanchir also knew that the girl had her own ideas. Coincidentally, someone came to find her and had something to do, so he left. After taking a few steps, Luo Mingchuan felt that something was wrong. Her eyes flickered towards the nearby tea house. I saw a man wearing a royal blue robe sitting on the window of the third floor elegant room. This person has an average appearance, but his demeanor is very extraordinary. A pair of deep and bright eyes, as Luo Mingchuan turned his head towards this side, the corners of his mouth hooked slightly imperceptibly. He picked up the teacup at hand, covered his lips, and murmured to himself, You're quite a keen person. The servant and guard behind him, Akiu, stood quietly with his sword in his hands. It may seem like nothing is being seen, but in reality, everything around the tea house and on the square is visible. Luo Mingquan didn't show it on his face, but secretly muttered to himself. Having a guard with martial arts skills above the 8th and below the ninth grade, I think this person has some background. Later, go to Aunt Tian's place and ask him what exactly this person's background is. Although An Ranju cannot be as knowledgeable as Hong Yifang and knows everything about the world, it still knows its customers to some extent. End of this chapter Chapter 2 Tea House You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Tea House The second floor of the tea house is separated by individual rooms with screens, although not as clean as the third floor, it also has a unique charm. Moreover, Compared to the third floor, the tea money will also be cheaper. So, there is usually no shortage of guests in the area, and today it is even more packed. Four young men sat at one of the tables by the window. The fabric of their clothes may not be as gorgeous as the young master upstairs, but they are actually top dot notch. Yen Xuan, from sitting here, you look out. What are you really looking at? One of the people wearing a black robe joked with a smile. The man in white, who leaned out half of the window, didn't look back and just muttered casually, You should eat, you should drink, don't worry about me. The man in Shwani who just spoke asked with great interest, What's wrong with him? What is he looking for? The man wearing a silver-gray robe next to him smiled and said, Is that still a question? 
Our Yen Xiaoya, who is known for his hard work, has a new goal. Is that right? The man in black suddenly became interested. I said you all have been living here peacefully for so many days. So, is there another problem? Don't listen to him talk nonsense. Yen Sun, dressed in white, turned around and glared at the two with dissatisfaction. The man in the silver-gray robe asked jokingly, What, did I say wrong? You stayed here not to see the girl. Yen Xuan took a sip of tea, then threw a piece of dim sum in his mouth and chewed it, Yes, I am for a girl here. I don't recognize the title of hot-handed flower destruction. The girls who are with me are all willing. The man in Xuani smiled and nodded, Yes, 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 we Yen Xiaoya are not vulgar. It's always the girl who takes the initiative to stick it up. Yen Xuan swallowed the dim sum in his mouth and said, Almost. The man in a lake blue robe, who had not spoken yet, said seriously, With Yen Sun's appearance, it is normal for those girls to actively stick it up. Yen Sun paused his hand as he served the tea and pretended to be angry, glaring at the other person. Qing Shan, when have you been like them too? What does it mean to be the same as us? The man in Shuani complained discontentedly. The man in a silver-gray robe also coaxed, Yes, can you tell us what's going on? Yen Sun looked at the three pairs of staring eyes and immediately hesitated, I won't tell you, I'll just keep looking for my girl. The man in Shuani asked curiously, Hey, what kind of girl are you interested in this time? The man in a silver-gray robe answered, It seems like it's not a lady from any particular family, but just a guard of Anran residence. Guard. The man in the black robe exclaimed in surprise, Yen Xuan, when did your taste drop so low? Surprisingly, he fell in love with a guard. The man in a silver-gray robe followed and coaxed, you don't understand that. This guard naturally has the taste of a guard. He said he blinked vaguely at the people around him. Ah, she's out. So she didn't follow the patrol team today, Yen Sun exclaimed in surprise. No wonder I haven't found her yet. After watching for a while, she couldn't help but smile and said passionately, I didn't expect her to be so bright and charming without the clothes of a patrol guard. Who, what exactly does it look like? The other three of them looked at Yen Sun's expression and squeezed into the window with excitement on their faces. Pointing, pointing, pointing to us, what exactly does it look like? The three of them cheered together. What do you want me to show you? Yen Sun's boss was unhappy. The person wearing a lake blue robe smiled and said, We'll help you palm your eyes. That's right, that's right. The other two followed and coaxed. Do you want you to have long eyes? Yen Sun said so, but Qing Shan spoke up, but he had to give face. Here, it's the one wearing a emerald green robe, a white long skirt, a pair of ponytails, a sapphire hanging from his forehead, and the one with sparkling eyes. Not to mention, she's really a little beauty, the man in a silver-gray robe sighed softly. The girl had a smile on her lips, and her ponytail on her head was calm and agile, making her look ethereal and lively, making her unable to help but feel happy. The man in the black robe said, Oh my, I quite like this woman too. Although it was intended to tease Yen Sun, there was a hint of sincerity in his heart. Go, 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 go away. Yen Sun shouted reluctantly, half truthfully, she belongs to me, no one of you wants to snatch her. You all learn from Qing Shan. The man in the lake blue robe couldn't help but shrink his eyes when he saw Ming Chuan. Immediately, he carefully scrutinized it again. When he heard someone mention his name, he lowered his eyes and also restrained all his thoughts. She pursed her lips and smiled, then sat back in her seat. Miss, do those four people have a problem? Chun Chao, who came over at some point, asked in a low voice. Luo Mingchuan withdrew his gaze and walked shoulder to shoulder with her, casually asking, Do you know who they are? After they went to a wonton stall and sat down, the spring grass shouted. Boss, two bowls of small wonton. More scallions, less salt. All right, 
please wait a moment, both of you. The boss agreed and happily walked up to the stove, busy with work. As Chen Chao poured tea for Ming Chuan, he whispered, the one wearing white clothes and shouting the most happily is called Yin Xuan. Luo Ming Chuan picked up his tea cup and said with great interest, is it what the people in the martial arts world call, Feng Lu Gongzi, Yin Xuan. When he looked over at Ming Chuan, he happened to show a big smile at him. A pair of peach blossom eyes filled with tenderness and honey, as if in this moment, you were his only one. Even though there are countless people coming and going between heaven and earth, their eyes are only filled with you. Ming Chuan couldn't help but laugh. The affectionate gaze and handsome appearance are some of the capital of romance. Chen Chao raised his eyebrows and lowered his voice, saying, Miss, you can't be deceived by his appearance. Luo Ming Chuan took his bowl of small wonton and said, I see. I don't know if I have taken the worries of Chen Chao to heart. Looking at Ming Chuan's carelessness, Spring Grass stirred the wonton in the bowl with a spoon, pondered for a while, and whispered. This man seems to be unrestrained on the surface, but it is rumored in the Jianghu that Yan Sun is actually a mechanism expert. Moreover, his martial arts have eight grades. After speaking, he passed a meaningful look over. I almost didn't say directly to her girl. You can be more careful. He must have a purpose to stay in peace. Open a new book. New books require care, please seek all kinds of support. Asterisk carrot carrot asterisk, end of this chapter. Chapter 3 Old Master's Birthday Banquet You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Old Master's Birthday Banquet 8th Grade Luo Mingchuan swallowed the small wonton in his mouth and raised his eyebrows funny. Since when are people above the eighth level of martial arts so worthless? In Anrenju, it can be seen everywhere. Spring Grass raised his eyebrows with a hint of pride and said, This shows that we live peacefully, crouching tigers and hiding dragons. With that excited expression, I almost clenched my little fist and waved it a few times. Luo Mingchuan's mouth twitched unconsciously, dot. Hart said. Miss, are you foolish? These people are not safe for us to live in, nor can they be used by us. Why are you so happy? Do you know that their martial arts are excellent, and their destructive power is equally strong? He <laughs> he. Chun Chao chuckled foolishly. She knew in her heart that her own girl was extremely intelligent and would never take these people seriously. Luo Mingquan was too lazy to pay attention to her careful thoughts and immediately asked, where are the other three people? Chen Chao nodded and said, the one wearing a black robe is the second son of Lu family castle, Lu Yuan. The silver-gray one is the third son of Green Willow Villa, Lu Wujing. The person wearing a lake blue robe was registered under the name Du Qing Shan but his actual name is Du Jingming. He is the young owner of the largest tea plantation in Jiangnan Road. Really? Luo Mingchuan couldn't help but take a serious look at Du Jingming. Wearing a lake blue robe and a purple jade hairpin on his head, although he could only see one side face, there was still a sense of familiarity between his eyebrows and eyes. Mingchuan withdrew his gaze and murmured to himself, I never expected him to come to Enranju. Although Chun Chao didn't know why her own girl felt so emotional, her little notebook in her heart had already memorized these few people. And, a key point was highlighted below the three words Du Jingming. The platform on the square has been set up. The stage occupies a large area and is also very high. The entire stage is covered with a bright red carpet, including the steps on both sides for people to enter and exit. Red silk peony flower balls are hanging around, with small red lanterns hanging between the two flower balls. On each small lantern, there is a golden longevity character written. A huge, ma gu show by screen separates the stage and the noisy night market outside into two worlds. In front of the screen, there is a strolling mahogany grandmaster chair. The table in front is full of fresh and attractive fruits, as well as various exquisite dim sum. As night falls, the lanterns begin to shine. Lanterns lit up one by one, like the stars scattered on the earth in the sky. 
The round figure of the former master, surrounded by everyone, sat on the main seat with one hand behind his back and the other hand stroking his beard. Taking the teacup handed over by the old servant, he took a sip and said, How are you preparing? As Mr. Yuan's business grew bigger and bigger, he became more meticulous in his work. For example, today, when will the banquet be held, when will birthday be celebrated, when will music be played, and when will the performance end? That was all calculated by the master. Early is not enough, late is not appropriate, the time must be just right. The old servant had been by his side for many years and understood his habits well. He smiled and said, We're all ready, we're just waiting for a word from you. The auspicious time has arrived and we can start now. Hmm. Old Master Yuan nodded inexplicably and waved his hand. Since everything is ready, let's start. Don't make everyone wait in a hurry. Yes. The old servant bowed. Standing straight behind, he gave a glance to the people around him. Seeing the person turn around and leave, he arched his body and looked at the old master with a smile, ready to pay his respects. How others don't know, anyway, getting the first birthday greeting from old master Yuan is like burning incense in a temple, it is definitely a good omen. As soon as he opened his mouth, a gentle and smiling voice rang in his ear, we live peacefully and wish Mr. Yuan good fortune like the East China Sea, a longer life than the South Mountain, prosperous business, and abundant wealth. Okay. Old Master Yuan's face burst into a big smile, feeling very comfortable in his heart. Although he heard too many auspicious words today, in his heart, this is the true way of paying respects. The rest doesn't count. Surprisingly, I was intercepted by this girl. Looking at the smiling expression on the face of the former master, the old servant's heart was no longer satisfied. He squinted his eyes and began to nitpick. Looking at the tray behind Tian Guanxer, his face was smiling, but his eyes were filled with sarcasm. I heard that Anranju has been making a lot of money lately, he said are you just fooling our master with these things? The smile on Tian Guanxer's face remained unchanged, with a sincere tone in his tone. Mr. Yuan is a capable person who lacks everything. These longevity packages are just a token of Anranju's affection, just icing on the cake. That's a pleasant statement. The former master was very pleased with the flattery of Tian Guanxer and chuckled, Tian Guanxer, you have a heart. Turning to the old servant, he gestured for him to take the things and said, divide them and let everyone taste the cooking skills of Anranju. This is a great honor. The old servant bit his cheek and said, Thank you very much, Manager Tian. Without waiting for the steward to speak, the former master smiled and said, I'll pay for everyone's expenses at tonight's market. Tian Guanxer was also a straightforward person, and without much hesitation, he smiled and said, Then I'll thank Mr. Yuan for those people. It's just a small matter. Old Master Yuan waved his hand indifferently. Tian Guanxia knew that the former master was wealthy and didn't really care about that little money. With a smile, he said, then I won't disturb old master Yuan's elegance. As soon as she turned around, the sound of silk and bamboo on the stage rang out. With the pleasant music, several slender women wearing red and pink dance dresses walked out lightly. Surprisingly, it's the song and dance of Hongyi Fong, exclaimed someone in the crowd. Old Master Yuan is the richest man in Suzhou Prefecture. Those ordinary song and dance workshops are not qualified to come to his birthday banquet. What this brother is saying. We have a lucky day today. Unlike the excited gazes of others, Zhuo Mingtang, dressed in a navy blue robe, stood in the crowd, his gaze fixed on the back of Tian Guanxia. Until he could no longer see it, he calmly withdrew his gaze. On the stage, there are waves of silk and bamboo, and graceful dance movements. Suddenly, the huge longevity peach in the center of the stage cracked open, and a slender figure jumped out of it. The sleeves are waving, and the footsteps are light and agile. Stepping on the red ribbon in the air, spinning lightly. Her face is beautiful, her eyes are flowing, and she smiles and frowns with a hint of charm. It's actually a girl in red. 
people stared blankly at the spinning figures in the sky and murmured to themselves. His gaze was like a thread, tightly entwined around the other person, mesmerized. As a woman, Luo Mingchuan takes it equally seriously. Seeking recommended tickets, collecting, and various types of support. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 Sugar Stall Uncle You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Sugar Stall Uncle It seemed to sense Luo Mingchuan's gaze, and with a wave of the water sleeve in the red shirt's hand, her beautiful face slowly emerged from behind the red veil. She raised her eyebrows and smiled slightly at Mingchuan, charming and graceful. Hiss. Luo Mingchuan couldn't help but take a cold breath, raised his hand to rub the goosebumps on his arms, and cursed angrily, demon. She remembers that when she first met her, she was still Li Qishue. Wearing clothes with patches stacked on top of each other, and tying hair with a tattered cloth towel. Holding a broken sickle in his hand, he chopped the snake that Luo Mingchuan had been looking for and was preparing to take the snake bile with a few strokes. While chopping, he shouted, Don't be afraid, don't be afraid, this snake is not poisonous. Luo Mingquan was carrying a medicine basket, his eyebrows furrowed to death. Looking at the shattered snake gallbladder, I wished I could strangle it to death. The other party didn't realize that their life was on the brink of danger, so they casually wiped their face with their sleeves and asked with a smile, Are you scared? Don't be afraid, it's all right now. She didn't know if she was saying this to Luo Mingchuan or to herself. My name is Li Qishue, what's your name? After the two of them sat on the spacious slate, Li Qishue was the first to speak. Luo Mingquan. Mingchuan's heart was still dripping blood, and his tone was also faint. Li Qishue was very enthusiastic, with a bright smile on her face. You look really nice. Really. As if worried that Luo Mingchuan wouldn't believe it, he quickly explained, from childhood to adulthood, it's the first time I've seen such a beautiful girl like you. Dot. Luo Mingchuan turned his head and glanced at the face, although ragged, it was difficult to conceal its beautiful appearance. If it weren't for her sincere smile. I almost thought she was saying this to make her praise her for being good. Looking. You look great too. Luo Mingchuan praised according to his heart. Oh, the girl in red smiled at me. A exclamation of surprise interrupted Luo Mingchuan's thoughts. Nonsense, she was clearly smiling at me. The person next to him sneered. You're all wrong, she's smiling at me. Another young man blushed and said shyly. Luo Mingquan grinned and felt a chill. These people are really unbearable. The girl in red was clearly smiling at me. She proudly raised her chin and turned to squeeze out of the crowd. Looking up, I couldn't help but see Zhongli. He embraced his arms with both hands, standing tall and straight, his eyes fixed on the dancing person on the stage for a moment. Feeling Luo Mingchuan's gaze, he turned his head to look over and nodded faintly, as if he had said hello. Luo Mingchuan knew that all his thoughts were now focused on the red clothes, so he decided not to provoke anyone. She tugged at the corner of her mouth, smiled, and then continued to push out of the crowd. Wow! She took a deep breath and sniffed hard at the sweet scent that permeated the air. She walked up to the sugar stand and sat down. The sugar stand owner seemed to have anticipated her coming and handed her a sugar figurine. Luo Mingquan rudely took it, took a bite, and his eyes lit up. Hmm, it tastes orange. The owner of the sugar stall is a middle-aged man who is five feet tall and has bright eyes. Although there is a horizontal scar on his face, he is not at all ferocious. His voice was also very gentle as he spoke, didn't you say you wanted to eat candy with an orange flavor? As he spoke, he handed over the newly made phoenix in his hand, flapping its wings and ready to fly. Feng Chiu Huang After Luo Mingchuan took over the sugar man, these three words inexplicably appeared in his mind. Waving away the chaotic thoughts in her mind, she grabbed the sugar figurine in her hand and praised it with a smile, it's so beautiful. How did you do it? 
A hint of softness flashed in C. Mohan's eyes, and his tone became even more gentle. I can do a lot more, as long as it's what you want, I can do it. This statement sounds somewhat ambiguous. However, there were no ripples in Luo Mingchuan's heart. Not only because the other party is a middle-aged uncle, but also because the heart lake of Luo Mingquan is like a stagnant water, unable to stir up any waves. Luo Mingchuan nodded with a smile and sincerely agreed, Uncle is really amazing. The blue water drop gemstone emits a warm light under the light. Reflected on the fair face of the girl, shining brightly. A hint of tenderness flashed in C. Mohan's eyes that he had not even noticed. The sugar onions over there are also ready, shall I go and wrap some for you? Although that's the case, I have already started wrapping it up. Since opening his eyes again, Ming Chuan has no intention of treating himself unfairly, especially in terms of food. Moreover, all the expenses today were paid for by someone on her behalf. Seeing that big bag of sugar onions and a pair of watery big eyes, they all laughed like crescents and said, Uncle, you're really great. Are you moved like this? A lazy voice suddenly sounded beside me. Luo Mingquan turned his head and suddenly saw Yan Sun dressed in white, shaking a folding fan in his hand and standing there very coquettishly. As Luo Mingchuan looked over, he raised his peach blossom eyes and revealed a smile that he believed was the most charming. I couldn't help but frown at Yan Sun's familiar attitude. Luo Mingchuan stared at him quietly with a pair of big black and white eyes. Who are you? Do I know you well? Where on earth did you get that confidence? I'll take care of you. Yen Sun. Dot. He himself knew it was a bit presumptuous to come this way. But he really waited for too long today, and also was amazed by her outfit today. Unlike her usual heroic demeanor in patrol uniforms, she is a bit more beautiful and agile today. His heart suddenly couldn't be controlled, and his feet couldn't help it. However, he is still very confident in his charm. But in the eyes of Luo Mingchuan's three consecutive inquiries, I only felt that one true heart had paid the wrong amount. Facing his very injured appearance, Luo Mingchuan cast a very frightened look and grabbed the packet of sugar onions and ran away. Hey, what does she mean by this? Yen Sun was so angry that green smoke came out of her head. She squinted her eyes and looked at Luo Mingchuan's back. She was treating herself like a lunatic, right? Pop. He closed the folding fan in his hand, and the corner of his mouth unconsciously curled up. It was truly my Yan's liking, and he was really angry with me. With one hand on his back, he lifted his foot and chased towards the direction where Luo Mingchuan disappeared. However, what he didn't know was that a murderous gaze fell faintly on him. Thank you all for your support. 90 Degree Bow End of this chapter Chapter 5 Get out of the way You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Get out of the way The song ends and the people scatter, and the stars fill the sky. The people living in Anran moved quickly, and after the banquet, they quickly cleaned up the stage. The stalls in the night market have also started to tidy up quickly. Miss Mingchuan Someone greeted her with a smile as they saw Luo Mingchuan passing by. Luo Mingchuan also spoke to them with a smile, Uncle Liang, you're closing the stall. Yeah. Uncle Liang said with a smile. Business is good today, so my smile has increased a bit. Luo Mingquan walked briskly around the night market, and when everything was calm, she stood quietly on the roof of the tea house. And Ranju has always been a big shot, with oil lamps lit in every corner. And, under someone's supervision, the night never dies. So, even at night, the entire Anranju will not fall into darkness. Mingchuan stood for a while before jumping down. When they returned to the room, Chun Chao and Xia Lu had already prepared their bathing water. Seeing her come in, Xia Lu smiled and asked, Miss, do you want to use some late night snacks? Ming Chuan smiled and shook his head, no need, you're also tired today. Go back and rest. 
Just come over here tomorrow to tidy up, that girl should rest earlier, too, said Chun Chao and Xiaolu as they retreated with a smile Luo Mingchuan sat at the table, poured himself a cup of tea, drank it slowly, and then turned to the screen to take a shower. Just as I sat in the bathtub, a gentle breeze blew by, and the gauze curtains around me swayed gently with the wind. In Luo Mingchuan's slightly narrowed eyes, a hint of sharpness flashed. Immediately, continue bathing as if nothing had happened. Dawn in the east, dawn first appears. When the first ray of dawn breaks through the sky, the birds on the tree fly out of their nests, chirping non dot stop. When Yen Sun opened his eyes, he found himself nestled in the middle of a tree branch. In front of him was an egg tied with a thread and hanging in front of him, rolling uncontrollably. What does this mean? Yenshuan held the egg in his hand and looked at it with great interest. Get lost. Ha ha ha. He couldn't help but burst out laughing, this girl is really quite interesting. After being rejected by Luo Mingchuan at the sugar stand last night, he not only didn't get angry, but also became more interested in Mingchuan. He followed behind her for a whole night, but couldn't find another chance to speak. This kind of thing, but he had never encountered it before as the Prince of Yen. Feeling anxious, I went to her room. Unexpectedly, she was taking a shower. What's even more unexpected is that as soon as he glanced at the large wooden barrel filled with heat, he knew nothing. When I wake up again, it's now, nestled in a tree, facing a rolling egg. It's a bit interesting. Yen Sun hooked his lips, grabbed the egg, and jumped off the tree. On the back slope of Anren's residence, there is a large peach forest. Peach blossoms are in full bloom, like magnificent colorful clouds on the horizon, it's really beautiful. Deep in the peach forest, there is a peach blossom temple. The peach blossom temple does not occupy a large area, but is just a small courtyard with three main rooms and two side rooms in the east and west. Lua Minquin pushed open the door of the peach blossom temple, stepped on the falling peach petals, and walked into the middle room. She placed the basket in her hand aside, picked up a cloth, and personally wiped the tables, chairs, and plaques here. After everything was sorted out, I took out the incense candles from the basket and placed them on the table. She lit the incense candle and respectfully bowed three times to the plaque on the table. After coming out of the main room, she walked into the west wing. The decoration in the room is very simple, except for a table and a few chairs, it is the bed leaning against the window. In a daze, she saw a thin and small girl sitting on the bed. Wearing a loose Taoist robe, with withered yellow hair piled haphazardly behind his head. She stared around with a bewildered expression. Upon hearing the sound of the door opening, she slowly turned her head and stared blankly at the door. Master Jingxin, dressed in a grey Taoist robe, walked in carrying a medicine bowl. She wore a kind smile on her face and said in a gentle tone, You're quite awake. Hurry up and drink the medicine. The girl didn't move, just stared at the other person in a daze. Sitting quietly by the bed, he smiled and said, It's okay if you don't want to drink now. Let's drink later. By the way, what's your name and where is your home? Can I take you back? The girl's lips moved, but after all, she didn't say anything and hung her head dimly. Let's just talk about one question at a time. Do you want me to inform your family? Girl, dot. There was still a moment of silence. Jingxin said, What's your name? It shouldn't be difficult to answer, right? The girl's eyebrows furrowed deeper, and there was a hint of complexity in her eyes. After a moment of contemplation, she lowered her voice and said mysteriously, Why don't I give you a name? Whoosh! A gust of breaking wind sounded, and Luo Mingchuan raised his eyebrows and twisted his body flexibly, avoiding the leaves that floated over with killing intent. The person who can be attacked obviously doesn't want to let her go so easily. As soon as she dodged the leaves, she felt a gust of wind coming from behind. She didn't panic and made a mistake in her footsteps, grabbing the stick at hand and blocking it backwards. The other party was not surprised to see her react so quickly. 
just the speed of the attack on the hand is getting faster and faster. Luo Mingchuan is not a vegetarian either. When he sees a move, his reaction speed is not slow at all. The two of them drove all the way from the west wing to the center of the courtyard, and then from the center of the courtyard to the peach forest outside. My clothes float away, my petals flutter. From a distance, it looked like two fairies who had stumbled into the world and danced in the wind. Stop fighting. Luo Mingchuan took the lead in stopping the move and casually threw his stick aside. Grab the wine jar from the stone table and jump onto a nearby branch of a peach tree. With his back against the tree trunk and one leg supporting him, he took a few sips of wine and casually said, It's like this every year. Can you have something new? Red Clothes sat beside her and lazily said, On the day of the death of my master and uncle, I will test your martial arts and see if you have been lazy. After taking a sip of the wine, I couldn't help but exclaim, Aunt Tian's craftsmanship is really getting better and better. This peach blossom wine is soft and mellow, which is really irresistible. Luo Mingchuan said, There aren't many that have been stored in the cellar for these ten years. You need to save some drinking. Red clothes know that her eye disease has recurred. You have become more and more skilled in martial arts. It seems like you haven't been slacking off lately, he said, feeling too lazy to pay attention to her, ah, uh, there's nothing I can do. Luo Mingchuan shook his head with a forced expression of helplessness. I don't have the fastest sword in the martial arts world to protect me at all times. Can't I have to work harder on my own? Zhongli, known as the fastest sword in the martial arts world, was an eighth grade master who never left after seeing red clothes. Continue to seek recommended tickets and collect them. Thanks Omega, end of this chapter. Chapter 6 Sisters Chatting You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Sisters Chatting Hongyafang is not only a singing and dancing workshop, but also a place for selling news. Although their actions have always been secretive, there are still some smart people in the martial arts world. Many people have heard of the news of the red clothes shop selling. However, Hongi Fang is still so red that it has not been torn apart by everyone. Apart from the power of Hongi Fang itself, it also has a great relationship with Zhongli. I'm just friends with Zhongli, said Hong Yi with a faint glance at her Luomingquan pursed her lips, but she didn't believe it at all. Zhongli has been guarding her for such a long time, and although the red clothes may seem indifferent to him on the surface, they have already taken it to heart in their hearts. Red Yi didn't care about Luo Mingchuan's teasing eyes and sighed faintly, he's dead. Her voice was light, but Mingchuan could hear it clearly. Mingchuan turned his head and looked at her with empty eyes at the nearby peach blossoms. The word, who, forced him to swallow it. When did it happen? Mingchuan asked softly. The father in red is a person who highly values men over women. When I was in Hongi or Li Qishue, I woke up earlier than chickens every day, ate less than cats, and lived more tiredly than donkeys. Nevertheless, she worked tirelessly without any dissatisfaction. Foolishly acting like a bull and a horse for the family. In order to let her brother drink rice porridge, her father sold her to the brothel and changed a bag of rice. This girl is also stubborn, she would rather die than go to pick up guests. They were beaten to the brink of death, but still crawled out of the dog hole in the brothel. Coincidentally, it happened to be encountered by Luo Mingchuan and then picked up at Peach Blossom Temple. Later, she became a disciple of Abbess Jingyi, the senior sister of Abbess Jingxin, and became the senior sister of Luo Mingchuan. Later on, after wandering around, she entered the red clothes workshop and became a red clothed girl. Although it's different from the original situation, I still haven't escaped from that circle. Now that the person who gave birth to and raised her, but ruined her life, has died, it won't be heartbreaking, but it will be somewhat sad in my heart, right? You don't have to look at me like this, I'm fine, said Reddy casually after looking up and taking a few sips of wine. Actually, in my heart, I have long regarded him as a stranger. If you really treat him as a stranger, why would you pay attention to his life and death? 
because his death is very mysterious, I heard it as gossip. Hong Yi snorted and said, I heard them talking about someone who was furious because their son stole silver. Can this be considered retribution, said Luo Mingchuan calmly he sold all his daughters for the sake of his son. Now, he is infuriated by his son. Who knows? Red Yi smiled indifferently and lifted the wine jar in her hand to take a few more sips. After pondering for a moment, Luo Mingchuan said, I'm free these days. Can I accompany you around? No need. Red Yi shook her head, although hearing the news of his death made her heart skip a beat. But I will never go to bury him she still harbors resentment towards what happened back then. Luo Mingchuan thought to himself. If her father had not deceived her into going to the brothel, but had sincerely discussed with her. This silly girl will definitely work very hard to earn money and support that father and son. It's just that being able to give birth to a daughter as smart as Hongi, that old manly should not be a fool either. So he chose this way, probably not wanting to use this daughter too hard, right? Alas, it's a mess. Who knows what oldly thinks? Now there is no chance to know. Don't frown, it looks so ugly. Reddy sneered with disdain. Here, you like it, he said, taking out an oil paper packet from his sleeve, sugar scallions. Surrounded by the familiar taste, Luo Mingchuan suddenly smiled and smiled. She casually placed the wine jar in her hand aside, grabbed the oil paper packet, picked up a sugar onion, and put it into her mouth. Well, it was actually three days ago, she said vaguely as she ate, didn't you get it for free at that birthday banquet? This mouth is really tricky. How did you know that, said Red Yi with surprised eyes, how did I know that? Luo Mingchuan chuckled, I just casually said it to deceive you. You actually believed it. Red clothed, unable to laugh or cry, gave her a blank glance and said, some food would be good. I remember three years ago, when my master and uncle were still alive, my uncle asked you to go down the mountain to deliver medicine, but you lay in front of the sugar stall and refused to leave. Oh my, that was so ugly at the time. I absolutely believe that if that uncle had been willing to give you a sugar figurine at the time, you would have followed him without hesitation when the embarrassing incident of the past was mentioned, Luo Mingchuan was not angry either. She smiled and said, from childhood to adulthood, only by following my master can I have my own silver money. Can you experience the joy of buying things you like with your own silver money, how can't you feel it? Hong Yi blinked her eyes and gave a bitter smile, the pearl flower I bought is still stored in my cabinet. Although it has faded and the style is very old, it is still cherished very much. She set the wine jar aside and also weighed a sugar onion and chewed it in her mouth. The breeze is gentle, the petals are flying slightly, and the air is filled with a faint sweet fragrance. Neither of them spoke, just quietly chewing on the sugar onions in their mouths. It seems that this hint of sweetness can wash away the bitterness in my heart. Oh my! Hong Yi suddenly sighed, fortunately, that uncle left and came back. Otherwise, we wouldn't have had such delicious sugar onions today. Ming Chuan relaxed and leaned against the tree trunk, whispering, they're not alone. What? The hand in red, who was delivering something to her mouth, paused and frowned in confusion. Why isn't it? Especially the scar on her face, I remember it very clearly. You're right. Luo Mingchuan nodded. From the appearance, there really isn't any clue. And both of them have the same technique in handling syrup programs and drawing sugar figures red clothes. So where exactly did you notice the difference? Mingchuan said, there is a slight difference in the taste between the sugar man and the sugar onion maid. Red clothes exaggeratedly widened their eyes and said, Oh my goodness, what kind of tongue are you? However, she believed in Luo Mingchuan's judgment and asked seriously, Do you want me to help you check? What is the purpose and purpose of this person disguising themselves and sneaking into Enranju? It should be clarified. Unexpectedly, Mingchuan shook his head and said, No need. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 
Qin family. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 7 Qin family no need. The eyebrows of the red clothes couldn't help but furrow, as two different people appeared in front of you with the same face and skills. If there is no conspiracy involved, who would believe it? Ming Chuan, you are not a careless person in your work. Ming Chuan played with the sugar onion in his hand and said slowly, three years ago, I was an unknown little girl. No one would bother to approach me. Now, although I sit in a peaceful home. It's just that Suzhou Prefecture has a small reputation. Furthermore, no one knows, except for those close to you, that I am the true master of Enranju red clothes. Although that's the case, the most indispensable person in this world is the wise. Whether it's in the martial arts world or in temples. We have to guard against it. He <laughs> he. Ming Chuan smiled, don't be so nervous. In the eyes of those big shots, a small peaceful residence won't be taken seriously. That's right. Reddy thought for a moment and understood. Such exquisite facial contouring techniques are not something that small families can achieve. It's just that. That's why it's even more unsettling. On the couch, how can others sleep soundly? A person who doesn't know whether they are enemies or friends stands on the side with a watchful eye, and no one's heart will be at ease. Ming Chuan was also very helpless, I can't see through this person. Red clothes furrowed their brows even tighter. Is it possible that the other party is a great master? Although Ming Chuan has not entered the ninth grade now, he can still see clearly. Unless the other party has reached the tenth level, which is the realm of a great master. Don't be so nervous, Ming Chuan said with a smile. If the other party is a great master, we don't have to be afraid. You are not unaware of how high the vision of the great master is. Will he be interested in our little thing's red clothes? What if? Ming Chuan. Then we can't move anymore. If the other party travels around using the way of a sugar seller to stabilize their mood. We accidentally disturb someone's enlightenment. Even if we fit together, we are not their opponents although the difference between ninth grade and tenth grade is only one grade level, it is very difficult to go from ninth grade to tenth grade. If not, in the talented great Chu, the number of great masters can be counted with just one slap. Hiss, said Luo Mingchuan, and Hong Yi couldn't help but shiver. Destroying someone's enlightenment would be even more tragic than killing a whole family. So. Luo Mingchuan said slowly, let's not disturb him. After he has some insights, we can also consider holding on to his thick legs. A great master, whether in the martial arts world or in the temple, holds an absolute position and weight that cannot be underestimated. But what if it's not? Hong Yi always felt that the pie was a bit big, afraid that it might break her teeth. No, it's not. Luo Mingchuan was very open-dot-minded. He pays rent to Enranju every month. No matter what the person's identity is, we will not be at a disadvantage. Don't be careless, Hong Yi still cautioned anxiously Luo Mingchuan nodded obediently and said, Senior sister, don't worry, I know the importance. All right, let's not talk about these boring topics anymore. Let's talk about something else. What do you want to say, said the person in red, looking at the person holding her arm and acting coquettishly Luo Mingchuan suddenly became interested, staring at his watery eyes and gossiping, let's talk about your relationship with Zhong Li, right? I know you're holding it back. How could the red dress allow her to succeed? She pushed Luo Mingchuan's face away expressionlessly. He took out a purse from his sleeve and said, A few days ago, you asked me to inquire about the Qin family. I already have news about it. Oh. Luo Mingchuan responded lightly and leaned back on the trunk, without reaching out to pick it up. Lazily, he said, No need to look. You can tell me to listen. You. Hong Yi looked at her tired and lazy appearance, and couldn't help but feel angry. I now know that you were not clumsy at all, you didn't see that master and uncle had great talent. You're just waiting for me to learn from you first and become a senior sister. 
take the opportunity to hide behind me for a lifetime. Let me be your lifelong servant girl. These words speak as if I could predict something. Luo Mingchuan felt that the anger in the red clothes was somewhat inexplicable. I definitely owe you in my previous life, murmured Red in indignation nevertheless, she still recounted what she had found to Luo Mingchuan. Qin Hai is now the head of Lingshan County. Although his official position is not prominent, no one dares to underestimate him. It's not because he is talented, but because he has outstanding three children. His eldest son, Qin Muyuan, has been smarter and more stable than other children since childhood, and can be both gentle and martial. Two years ago, in the martial arts competition, he squeezed into the top ten and successfully obtained the position of Wu Jinshu. Although he missed the palace examination, it would be quite good for him to have such a cultivation at his current age. So, he became the object of contention among the powerful officials in the capital. Unfortunately, he fell in love with Left Ming Tang, the eldest son guarding Left Shen in the capital, and is currently working with him. People often say, it's better to bully an old man than to bully a young man who is poor. Such a talented and elegant young man, everyone has to give him a fair share. The second son Qin Mufeng and daughter Qin Mushua are twins of dragons and phoenixes. The appearance and talent of the two are also ranked high in Shirley Ba village. When Qin Mufeng was 14 years old, he went to the Yaman to work as a constable. Although he is only 16 years old now, he has also become a moderate leader. And Qin Mushue, the daughter, was the son of Lady Yun, the largest tea merchant in Jiangnan Road, Du Jingming. That is, the future head of the Du family. Mingchuan inexplicably tightened his hand on his side, wrinkling his collar. When did the Du and Qin families get engaged? asked in a hoarse voice Red Yi e flipped through the paper in her hand and said, The two have been engaged for six years, haven't they? Yes, the two were arranged in April of the sixth year of Jianyuan, and now it's June of the twelfth year of Jianyuan after the words fell, Luo Mingchuan didn't speak, even his favorite sugar onion was not eaten. She sat quietly there, squinting her eyes and looking into the distance, her gaze slightly cold. With a sigh that turned around a thousand times, do you think? Which one sounds better, Qi Mushue or Luo Mingchuan? Reddy slowly turned her head and asked in the same slow tone, Do you think Li Qi Xue or Red Yi is better? Luo Mingchuan raised his eyebrows unexpectedly, and when the two gazed at each other, he couldn't help but chuckle. You can see bitterness in the other person's smile. Grab the wine jar placed next to them and bang them together. I tilted my head and started pouring in big gulps. Perhaps I drank too quickly, tears streaming out from the corners of my eyes. End of this chapter Chapter 8 Seems to have a thief. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 8 Seems to have a thief on the lush green mountains, unknown birds occasionally make a few cheerful calls. A gentle breeze blows, and waves of peach blossom fragrance waft in, making one feel refreshed and happy. The golden sunlight shone through the open window into the room, bright and warm. Luo Mingchuan sat behind the desk, fiddling with his abacus while facing the ledger. Lips slightly pursed, eyes focused. The mischievous wind seemed unwilling to disturb, just gently brushing the green hair scattered on her shoulders. After the clear sound of the abacus, Xia Lu came in with a tray and a smile, Girl, I cooked you a bowl of rice dumpling. Mingchuan looked up from the ledger and said, You came just in time. I happen to be hungry too. She stood up from behind the desk, took the handkerchief handed over by Xia Lu, wiped her hands, and then sat beside Xiao to eat. By the way, what is Aunt Tian busy with? As Xia Lu tidied up the books on the desk, she whispered, something happened earlier. Manager Tian will go over and handle it. What's going on? Mrs. Qian Silver in the courtyard of, a uh, and, D has been lost. It is said that someone saw our assistant in Enranju take it. Manager Tian is currently leading people in the lobby for trial. How could such a thing happen? Mingchuan could not help frowning, 
and she gently stirred the rice dumpling in the bowl. If I remember correctly, this Lady Qian came in on the day of the old master's birthday party, right? Miss, you're right. Xia Lu nodded, Madam Qian is the distant cousin of the former master's daughter. In law. It can also be considered as having close ties with the original family Mingchuan. Are there any people who are related to the original family living in Anren now? Xia Lu tilted her head for a moment and thought, it seems like this Lady Qian is the only one left. Because the former master paid for the room for three days, and three days later, the others also left Mingchuan hooked her lips and smiled silently. That's interesting. She picked up the handkerchief at hand and wiped the corner of her mouth. Let's go over and take a look too. Anren lives in the lobby across the courtyard to the west. Tian Guan sat upright at the top, with a lady wearing a dark green brocade long dress sitting next to her. Looking at the two women standing up in the middle, and then looking up at the people gathered around the lobby to watch the excitement, their faces couldn't help but feel uneasy. She picked up her tea cup and took a sip of tea, then lowered her voice and said, Tian Guanshir, let's forget it. So many people are watching, how bad is it to spread rumors? Tian Guanshir looked at the two people in front of him with a serious expression. When he heard Mrs. Qian speak, he accompanied her with a smile and said, I know, madam, you have a kind heart at home, but the matter lies with my peaceful residence. I can't just lightly expose it like this. Looking at Tian Guanshir's expression of, I will definitely make the decision for you, Mrs. Qian's eyebrows couldn't help but jump. She lifted her handkerchief and pressed the corner of her mouth, and her words were very understanding. If I knew I had caused you so much trouble, I wouldn't say anything. It's just twenty tails of silver, and it's not worth such a big fight. So, as long as she apologizes to me, she doesn't need to return the silver anymore. If she spends it, she'll spend it. I believe she also has a last resort. Tian Guanchir looked at Madame Qian with tears in his eyes and said, Madame is really a bodhisattva's heart. Looking at Tian Guanchir's excited expression of not knowing what to say, Madame Qian curled her lips slightly and inexplicably. I didn't wait for what I wanted to hear, feeling a sense of disappointment in my heart, but it didn't show any signs on my face. Don't say that bodhisattva's heart is not bodhisattva's heart, I just believe in living in peace and using people's eyes. Under normal circumstances, when Tian Guanshu heard such words, he should be both moved and apologetic, saying, Madam, I really don't know what to say with such generosity. But what's happening right now, it's all our fault. In this way, Madam's expenses for the past few days will be fully credited to our Anranju account Mrs. Qian naturally refused, and both sides declined, and the whole matter was resolved in such a joyful atmosphere. Unfortunately, this field steward has a solid eye. Being moved is moving, but it also strengthens the determination to see things clearly. She said excitedly, although Madam doesn't care about this meager twenty tails of silver, I can't help but give Madam an explanation and let her suffer. Otherwise, I have no face to face the original master, right upon hearing the three words, Mr. Yuan, Mrs. Qian's heart suddenly couldn't help but beat uncontrollably. No, actually. The steward mother behind her gently tugged at her collar, and Mrs. Qian swallowed the words that were originally on her lips, pulling out a stiff smile. Then there's the steward of Laotian. Manager Tian shook his head quickly and said, Madam, you are our valued guest. These are all things I should do. What else can I say when I've already talked about it? Madame Qian smiled without speaking, and the handkerchief she was holding in her hand was already wet with sweat. When facing the two people standing in the middle, Tian Guanshu didn't have a good expression. She remained calm and asked coldly, Tell me, what's going on? She pointed to the woman on the right and said, You speak first. She paused for a moment and sternly scolded, Don't think that Lady Qian is kind you can fool her. This is the lobby, right or wrong, it all depends on everyone's eyes. Madam Qian clenched her handkerchief tightly and couldn't help but say, talking about things in the lobby is really because they dare not be careless. 
The woman whose husband's surname was Chi, as pointed out by Tian Guanxi, is commonly referred to as Chi's sister. In law, Chi's sister. In law cried so much that her eyes were swollen. She shook her head hoarsely and said, "I didn't. I didn't steal silver. I was unjustified, really unjustified." She has a dying heart. How could I be so unlucky and falsely accused? Tian Guanxi snorted coldly and said, You really can't shed tears until you see the coffin. Leader Chiao, come on. You tell her all about the process of stealing silver and the amount she stole, every detail. See how she sophists. Leader Chiao is the manager of all the helpers, as she said, the matter of silver is related to Sister Qi. She pulled out a smile that she thought was very sincere and said with a troubled expression, Tian Guanxi, isn't that good? This is the lobby, with so many pairs of eyes watching, we have to save some face for Mrs. Qi, right? Perhaps it was due to Tian Guanxi's eagerness to establish a relationship with the former master, and he did not even see the explicit and implicit instructions from Captain Xiao. Why is it not good? I can't talk to anyone about anything, you talk to me about it. The blisters on my feet are all rolled out by myself, he said, teasing his neck she's embarrassed, she deserves it. As soon as she finished speaking, someone screamed, no problem, Mrs. Chi's mother. In law fainted at the entrance. End of this chapter. Chapter 9. Saving People. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 9 Saving People As Xia Lu and Luo Mingchuan walked towards the lobby, they whispered, Miss, is this appropriate? After all, there are so many people in the lobby. Luo Mingchuan chuckled and said, Tian Guanxi has saved face. If it were me, I would move to the night market square for questioning. At that time, not only the female relatives, but also the male guests will know about this matter. Isn't this too harsh? Xia Lu widened her eyes in surprise and remained silent for a long time. Luo Mingchuan smiled lightly and said, This wind cannot last long. Once everyone feels that Enranju cannot guarantee their financial security, who dares to come to our Enranju? Furthermore, for those who work in the Anran neighborhood, whether they have signed a personal contract or are working as helpers, the most intolerable thing is that their hands and feet are not clean she would never allow the atmosphere of peaceful living to be ruined by these shallow-minded people. Miss, this is a warning to those people and a deterrent. Xia Lu nodded clearly, indicating that she knew. It's not like this, it's not like this. My daughter Dutton Dot Law has been wronged. As they passed by the west gate, they suddenly heard an old voice shouting with all their might. This voice, Lu Mingquan paused in his footsteps, slowly turned his head, and widened his eyes in disbelief. An elderly woman around sixty years old, her clothes have turned white after washing. Perhaps I rushed too quickly, my hair was a bit scattered, and my face had an abnormal blush. After finishing a sentence, he stood there panting heavily. She eagerly explained to the patrol officer Wang, I didn't lie, I really didn't. Wang, the steward, was originally a person who was not good at words. Faced with this old lady who suddenly rushed towards him, he felt a bit at a loss and said, Don't worry, don't worry, speak slowly if you have something to say. I'm not in a hurry, I'm not in a hurry. The old lady didn't know if she was really comforted, but still felt it was impolite to grab someone like this. She took a deep breath and slowly stood up straight, intending to take a step back. As soon as Ku released manager Wang's arm, his whole body collapsed backwards. Ah! Steward Wang was startled and instinctively reached out to hold the person. Hurry up and carry it into the room. At the moment when his wife closed her eyes and collapsed, Luo Mingchuan felt his blood clotting all over his body. What's going on, who is this person? Xia Lu turned her head and asked Chen Chao, who hurriedly came over. Chen Chao said, She is Mrs. Qi's mother. In law, and people call her Mrs. Qi. Chiao, the leader of the team, said that Mrs. Qi stole money from Madame Silver. Is that so? 
Xia Lu suddenly realized something was wrong, didn't this just happen? The whole and Ranju has not yet spread the news, why did Mrs. Chi's mother in law come? Mississippi. Before he could finish speaking, Luo Mingchuan interrupted with a serious expression on his face, stop talking about this. It's important to save someone first. Yes, girl. Xia Lu and Chen Chao also understood that at this moment, Mrs. Chi's mother in law must not have any trouble. Otherwise, no matter what outcome the trial may bring, and Ranju will be in trouble. After entering the room, Luo Mingchuan washed his hands and walked to the bedside to reach out and diagnose the pulse for Grandma Chi. After Xia Lu and Chun Chao exchanged a glance, they quickly entered a state of mind. Chun Chao came over to give Mingchuan a hand, and Xia Lu closed the doors and windows, while also keeping those curious gazes outside. In front of outsiders, Luo Mingchuan has always maintained a persona that is useless in all aspects except for a bit of skill. Although her decision made it difficult for those around her to understand, no one questioned it. After Mingchuan diagnosed his pulse, he had a clear idea in his heart. She took out a packet of silver needles from her purse, cleaned them carefully, and then began to give Grandma Chi acupuncture and moxibustion. Looking at her serious and focused expression, Chun Chao and Xialu couldn't help but glance at each other. It seems that I have never seen such solemnity on the girl's face before. The two of them couldn't help but become more cautious. With a twist of Luo Mingchuan's fingertips, Grandma Chi, whose eyes were tightly closed, suddenly coughed fiercely, her neck tilted, and she spat out a mouthful of blood-stained yellow phlegm. Chun Chao looked at the yellow phlegm on the handkerchief and breathed a sigh of relief, it's okay now. After Luo Mingchuan pulled out the silver needles one by one, Grandma Chi's breathing gradually returned to even. Although his face was still pale, it was much better than the initial cyan purple color. Luo Mingchuan slowly stood up straight, his eyes never moving away from Grandma Chi's face. After taking the wet handkerchief handed over by Xia Lu and wiping her hands, she instructed Chun Chao, you go to my private warehouse and fetch some medicine. Private Library Chun Chao couldn't help but be stunned for a moment. The medicinal herbs there are all top dot quality. Seeing that Luo Mingchuan had no intention of changing his mind, he quietly agreed and turned around to leave. Xia Lu deftly cleaned the silver needle and put it in her purse. Seeing Luo Mingchuan's solemn expression, he couldn't help but ask in a low voice, Miss, what's the problem with this person? No, Luo Mingchuan shook his head gently. I just remembered some past events. In the lobby, manager Tian coldly glanced over, and the person's lips trembled, unable to say a word. Tian Guanchi's lips curved into a sarcastic smile, and he turned his head to continue urging Captain Xiao, saying, Speak up quickly, don't procrastinate. You're still talking. How could you still say such a thing after all this happened? The doubt in Xiao's eyes flashed away, and under the gaze of Tian Guanchi, he finally slowly lowered his head. After stuttering for a while, he didn't say a complete sentence, that. Tell me the truth. Tian Guanchi's spare light didn't even give to the anxious sister. In. La Chi, who looked at Xiao's leader seriously. I'll make the decision for you. Xiao, the leader of the team, felt a chill all over his body and his legs softened. With a plop, he knelt down on the ground and said, Tian Guan, please spare me. What do you mean by that? Steward Tian's eyes perked up and he became unhappy. I just wanted you to tell me what you said to Madame Qian, how could it become a problem for you? Xiao, the leader of the team, trembled and said, I didn't tell Madame Qian anything. What should I tell you? Tian Guanxi furrowed his brow in confusion and said, What do you mean by this? How could you suddenly change your words? She turned her head and said apologetically to Madame Qian, who had an unpleasant expression on her face, Madam, it was my improper use of personnel that caused trouble for you. What do you mean by this? Madame Qian's expression was somewhat complicated, with a thousand words on her lips, leaving only one sentence. Whatever the steward Tian says, it's all mine. After speaking, 
I vaguely felt something was wrong, why did it become my fault? I want to say a few words to make up for it, but I don't know what to say. New books require care, please seek all kinds of support. End of this chapter. Chapter 10. Making it shameful. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 10 Making it shameful Madame Qian has nothing to say, but manager Tian talks endlessly. She scolded Tian Xiao with a fierce and stern expression, Tian Xiao, you're not a child either. Why are you speaking so unreliable? A thing without a trace, you must have said it with a nose and eyes. Not only did it delay your own affairs, but it also delayed the time of all of us. Do you know that Madame Qian is our valued guest? As a member of Anranju, you should keep your duties and do your part well. What are you trying to do, making trouble out of nothing and chewing your tongue recklessly? Are you trying to disrupt the relationship between our Anranju and the former master listening to Tian Guanxi chattering incessantly, Xiao led the team with a fiery face, and his entire blood froze. My mind was blank, and I could only kneel there, bowing my head and letting people curse. Mrs. Qian's face also turned green and white, and she didn't know if she had thought too much. She always felt that manager Tian's words were insinuating. There is always one or two sentences that will allude to oneself. Tian Guanxi Xia Lu pushed aside the crowd and walked in. Grandma Qi has already woken up. If there's nothing wrong with Sister Qi, let her go and take a look. Tian Guanxi nodded and said, Okay, you can go and take a look. Let's talk about other things later. Thank you very much, Manager Tian, said Mrs. Chi, bowing in gratitude to Manager Tian turn around and run towards the crowd. Tian Guanxi looked at Xia Lu standing still, his eyes turned, and he asked calmly, What's wrong? Is there anything else? Xia Lu smiled and said, I heard someone discussing today's matter on the way here, but I only listened to it for a while and didn't understand it. So, I brought two people over, I believe you can ask the manager clearly what does it mean. Tian Guanxi frowned inexplicably, unable to understand Xia Lu's intentions for a moment. Of course, this did not hinder her cooperation with Xia Lu, oh, where is the person? Hurry up and call them over. You two come over, Xia Lu turned around and shouted to the two little girls in their teens. Two little girls, you push me and I push you, walked over hesitantly and bowed low, saying, I've seen the steward Tian and the lady before. Tian Guanxi asked with a calm face, what were you discussing just now? The slightly taller girl blushed and said, my brother found a purse with twenty tails of silver inside. I was just discussing this with Xiao Hong and was overheard by Sister Xiaolu twenty tails of silver. Madame Qian's eyebrows twitched, it's really quite clever. She looked silently at the steward's mother behind her. The steward's mother is also a clever one, glancing at the dark purple purse held in her hand by the little girl. You can vaguely see a pink lotus flower through the gaps in your fingers, and your heart suddenly knows. She smiled lightly at the corner of her mouth and asked in a friendly voice, What did you find is a dark purple purse embroidered with a lotus flower? Two little girls stared in surprise at the same time, and one of them blurted out, How did you know? A hint of pride flashed in the steward's mother's eyes, and her smile became even brighter. This happens to be the wallet we lost, she said, really. Manager Tian also felt that this was too coincidental, and his eyes were filled with surprise. This is really great. Madame Qian covered the corner of her mouth with a handkerchief and nodded with a reserved smile, so, this was just a misunderstanding. But the little girl hesitated a bit and said, Madame Qian, this steward's mother, are you? Sure this wallet is exactly what you lost. As she spoke, the little girl stretched out her hand and spread her purse in her palm. The steward's mother smiled and glared at her, isn't that what I just said? Madame Qian also nodded, indeed. Although this purse is not a precious item, it is also something I have been used to. This. The more they said, the more strange the little girl's face became. The steward's mother was unhappy and said, why, you don't want to pay it back. 
Of course, this sentence was directed at the steward. Tian Guanxer looked stern and scolded, what are you stuttering about? What can't you say? The little girl blushed and said in great embarrassment, but this purse was found by my brother in the thatched cottage on the east side. He didn't have time to hand it over to the steward over there, so he asked me to hand it over to the front counter, bang. After hearing the little girl's words, the steward's mother and Mrs. Qian felt like they were all burning from head to toe, with their hearts, liver, and lungs almost on fire. Especially when they heard the undisguised laughter of those around them, their faces became even worse, and they wished they could find a way to crawl in. The girl is really tough. Tian Guanxer twitched his lips, suppressed his smile, and with a stern face, pretended to be angry and scolded the two little girls, what are you still doing here? Hurry up and get down. Yes. The two little girls hung down and turned around to leave, feeling relieved. Tian Guanxer looked at the backs of the two little girls and felt some sympathy for Mrs. Qian in his heart. As he turned his head, he looked apologetically at the two people, but the words he said were unclear, I didn't expect it to be like this. Ha ha ha. The situation in the lobby was not deliberately carried away, so the entire Anran neighborhood quickly spread. After hearing this, the people in the tea house burst into laughter. See Mohan sat in the corner, his mouth slightly curled up, and he shook his head helplessly. This girl is really a master who refuses to suffer losses. However, this is quite good. I can't say why, but my heart is very happy. Akiu stood beside Zwa Ming Tang, grinding his ink and telling this story as an interesting one. Finally, he concluded, young master, I never expected such a big misunderstanding to occur in the end. The wolf hair in Zwa Ming Tang's hand rustled on the high dot quality rice paper, and he said without looking up, do you really think this is just a misunderstanding? Otherwise. Akiu asked with a smile, it's not like this is a pit dug by an Ran Jew, causing Madame Qian and her servants to jump in, is it? Zhuo Ming Tang took advantage of the ink-stained gap to glance at him and continued writing the words in his hand. What a pit! Akiu exclaimed, isn't this Enren residence too unorthodox? Madame Qian is related to the former master. As the saying goes, look at Buddha's face without looking at the monk's face. Zhuo Ming Tang placed the wolf hair in his hand on the white jade pen holder next to him and said calmly, flies don't bite seamless eggs. What does it mean? Akiu scratched her head, indicating that she didn't understand. Zhuo Ming Tang picked up the paper he had just finished writing and gently shook it. Don't stand here, go and inquire about the future development of this matter, he said, follow up. Akiu hesitated in her heart, but dared not speak out to refute. Seeking collection, seeking recommended tickets, seeking investment. Please everyone. End of this chapter.